recording. Welcome to the uh, second Twitter cohort meeting. I'm Bob Birch. Good to have you along. Um, I'm with the Network Literacy Community of Practice, as are uh, several of our uh, moderators that you uh, see there at the top of the participant uh, window. We've got quite a few moderators on today, and they're going to be busy uh, uh, sharing information with you and uh, answering your questions um, at any time uh, during today's meeting. If you have a question, you can post it to the chat pod in the lower left-hand corner, or if you'd uh, like to use your microphone to ask the question, if you just want to uh, raise your hand, uh, we'll call on you, and you can click the talk button to uh, share your voice with the room. So there's a couple of housekeeping uh, things that I want to get into before uh, we sort of move on to the discussion portion here of the meeting. And the first is to talk about the uh, Twitter Cohort 2013 list. Uh, this is a list in Twitter uh, under the Alex Netlet Twitter account that uh, actually John Donor has been doing a great job of keeping up um, and adding everybody in the Twitter cohort into that list. And the importance of that list uh, is that uh, you can easily uh, find who's in the Twitter cohort, follow the whole list, or just follow the members that you, that you wish to follow. Um, and it really is important in terms of helping us to build this community and get connected with one another. So we do want your name on that list. And if one of the moderators, John, John's probably already doing that, if, if you could post that uh, link uh, to the chat pod so it's a clickable link. So one of the things I'd like you to do uh, during the, the meeting uh, today is uh, if you can follow that link that uh, uh, John's going to post in the chat pod um, and click that and check out that list and make sure that you're on it. Uh, when I checked it this morning, there were 86 members. Um, we should have well over 100 when we count guides. We've got 100 people uh, registered. Oh, thanks, Steve, for posting that. Um, so if you could click that link in the chat pod to the Twitter list, that should bring up the list, and check and see if your Twitter account is on there. Um, if it is not on the list, what I'd like to do is come back into the Collaborate uh, room and add your Twitter account to the chat. And that will that way we'll know your Twitter handle and we can get you added to the list um, so that we can continue to use that as a way for all of us to connect to one another. So um, as you get a chance, as you, uh, as you come into the room or as you have time during today's meeting, if you could check that out. If you don't get a chance to uh, check that during the meeting today, uh, you can check it later on and just uh, share your Twitter username, your account uh, with me or with John Dorner or with any of the, any of the guides. But if you, if you share it with John or me, we'll make sure that we get you on that list. And you can do that in Twitter just by uh, mentioning John or I in your tweet or you can email uh, one of us as well uh, and uh, I'll post my email uh, in the chat right now. Um, so we need to get those Twitter accounts added to that list. That's really going to help us build this community. If you have any questions about that, um, please post them to the chat pod. And I'm going to I'm going to sort of talk slowly here, as I assume I'm hoping some of you are out looking at that list and, and making sure that your account is on there. Okay, so let me let me move on here. So this past week, uh, what we asked you to do in terms of your your self guided activities uh, was to start building your learning network using Twitter, basically finding and following uh, accounts on Twitter. Um, that's one of the things we mentioned last week during the meeting, and I want to reiterate today is that um, the value of Twitter is all about uh, how you build your network. And so um, if you're looking at your Twitter stream and the tweets on there that people are sharing and you're looking at and saying, I don't see any va anything valuable here, that means your network's not set up right. There's definitely valuable information on Twitter. I think all of our guides can, can account 
uh, for that or can testify to that. Um, and so it, it's all about how you build your network and who you're following. So, so that was one of the things that we wanted you to do today was to go out and seek out or this past week to go out and seek out some new people outside of the Twitter cohort even to find uh, and to follow. So did anybody have any questions about that process or anything to share about that? Um, did you have any problems? Are you confused about how to find people? Uh, anything about that? Please post that to the chat pod or raise your hand if you have a question. Okay, so A. Kinkley, if you could, if you want to check that list, the link is in the chat pod and just see if your username is on there. Uh, I'm, I'm going to assume, John, I guess, if, if you think that's the right assumption you make, is that A. Kinkley is possibly oh, a Twitter check. name. Um, so maybe that's, maybe that, and we can get you right on the list there. Um, so I see some people are, are sharing stuff already in the chat. I'm going to leave it to the guides to try and keep up with most of this. Um, so that you don't have to listen to my silence as I'm reading. Um, yeah, and I see that Donna has already started to, to do what the second bullet asks you to do, and that is to share uh, one of the accounts you followed uh, this week. And, you know, just a, just a quick line about why you're following that account or what you think that account is going to offer you in your Twitter uh, profile. Um, Donna's got a question about how do I get rid of someone uh, I want to quit following, and that's pretty uh, that's pretty easy to do, Donna. All you need to do is to, uh, you know, either in in Twitter or in Hootsuite, is to click on their name. And let me see if I can find. I've got some slides up here. I, did, I wanted to avoid a screen share today because we had a little, it was a little draggy uh, the last week. So let me see if I have a slide that will show you that. So. So this is a slide that uh, shows it in Twitter. Um, so uh, in this case, I've just clicked on the name of Jennifer Reese, um, and that pops up this profile summary. And you can see the, the blue button there that, that says following. If I click that, I'm going to unfollow Jen. And so uh, that's really all there is to it, is, is just you know instead of leaving that following button click, you just uh, Click it, and that will unfollow that person. Let's see if I can find a slide. When you button. hover your pointer over that following button, it changes to a red unfollow button. Thanks, John. Uh, that's a good clarification. Let me see if I can find a slide with uh, the Hootsuite profile summary on it. So um, a little bit different here. You can see this is I just clicked on this person's name on one of the tweets they sent. Or you can look at the list of people that you're following. Go to your profile and click following to see who you're following. And you, you can uh, unfollow them right from there. Or in Hootsuite, you could uh, click on a person's name when you see their name in a tweet. And then you'll see these buttons down at the bottom. There's a, uh, sorry about the ringing phone. That was not prepared for my uh, webinar. Uh, when I tell people to prepare for their webinars, I always tell them, unplug your phone. Um, so you can see the follow button there. That, that's where the red arrow is pointing to. And right next to that, there's an unfollow button. And guys, if you have anything to add to that, please feel free to turn on your mics and, uh, and add to that. Bob, do you see Alicia's comment question about if you follow a list? Do you then follow everything that everyone on that list posts? Um, and the answer to that would be yes. I think there's some exceptions. I don't know if John or Marisa, do you know that there's, is there exceptions for uh, replies and things like that? I don't know of exceptions. I think when you you subscribe to a list, you don't follow a list. But yeah, I think when you subscribe to a list, basically you're getting those li those posts in your stream. And really, it's all about you know if you're trying to carry on 
um, as part of a conversation or what have you on Twitter. It's really the use of that hashtag that allows people to, you know, follow that conversation along. So I'm not, I don't know of anything with thin lists that allow you to just conversate just with those people in that list. So I've seen a lot of good uh, comments in the chat. I see Barb saying that she followed one key person and, and found several other people in orgs to follow. That's great. Um, and that's what we talked about in some of the resources that we shared last week about sort of using uh, the following list and the followers list um, of people that you follow to lead you to, to new folks uh, that you can add to your network. Um, yeah, so uh, if somebody could just retweet, I see that somebody wanted, did we already retweet the list, the URL of the list? Or I mean repost that in the chat. So somebody asked for the, the URL of the list, if one of the guides could repost that to the chat, that'd be great. And Alex Netlet just retweeted it. Oh, great. With the Twitter cohort hashtag, I hope. Nope. Sorry. <laughs> Should have. Missed that one. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. So Lila's got a good uh, comment in there about overwhelmed by lots of relevant info, no time to read it all. I don't know. I, I haven't been able to scroll down to see if any of the uh, anyone else has addressed that uh, in the chat. So I apologize if it's been addressed there already. But uh, that definitely can happen. And you know, I think I talked earlier about being in charge of your network and and trying to balance that out by you know if, if someone's posting a majority of information that's irrelevant to you you know, to unfollow those people and uh, build your network so that it's as relevant as it can be. But definitely um, what I do want to talk about is the comment, no time to read it all. Twitter, it, it, you know, and most social media really is, is a stream. And so if you think of that analogy of a sort of a, a real life stream, you know, you dip your toe in the water. You don't try and, you know, touch all of the water at once or you don't have to walk all the length of the stream. Um, the way that, the, you know, the way that most people use Twitter, sort of the effective way to use it is not even to think about, I need to read all the tweets. I follow, you know, now that I'm following all of you folks in the Twitter cohort, I'm probably up over 500 or something. There's no way I can read all of those tweets. My goal is to follow the right people, the right mix of people, so that when I drop in for the, the 5 or 10 or 15 minutes or however many, however much time I choose to invest in Twitter a day, that when I drop in and read the tweets that are posted at that time and, you know, probably in the last 30 minutes or so would all I would be have, have time to read, that I can scan those and find some things that are of interest to me, that are relevant, that can help me in my own personal learning goals, professional development, help me find things to share with uh, the people who uh, follow me on social media. You know, if, if I'm not finding those things in, you know, 10 minutes, 10 minute intervals or 15 minutes a day of, of looking at Twitter, then there's something up with my network. I, I've got to find better people to follow um, or, or uh, get rid of some of the people that I'm already following. Uh, because uh, you shouldn't have to think about reading all the tweets in your stream. And I think that's where that's where lists come in handy because so I follow a lot of social media gurus and you know I'm getting involved in you know in marketing gurus because I want to be able to utilize those skills and and bring them to academia and help us to figure out how can we integrate that to to further our reach of our programming or whatever it is that we're working on and so I really hone in on those you know people that I'm interested in following that I I know are the leaders in the field who are out there finding the most relevant information so that when I do have five minutes standing in line at the grocery store or, you know, waiting on the kids or whatever, I posted that in the chat earlier, um, I, I can get the information quickly and apply it to what I'm doing. And there's, 
I, I'm not trying to search through my entire stream, which is extremely busy. I'm just honing in on the information that I'm looking for right then. So it makes a big difference if you can really, you know, put your list together in such a way that you are, okay, what do I want to know this week? What do I want to know next month? What do I want to know next year? Put those lists together, and then you can follow those specific people. Yeah, and I'll just I'll just add to that a little bit is that um, you know because in response to Dave Varner's question, I think uh, Marissa, you responded to that in the chat as well. Is that I don't necessarily um, and some people may do this. I don't necessarily open up the list of people that I'm following, you know, periodically and go through the whole list and think should I follow, should I unfollow that person? Should I unfollow that person? Um, I really look at it more of looking at my feed itself. Right, so if if I spend some time looking at my feed and it's getting gummed up because somebody's posting something that's not relevant to me um, that I don't find value in, you know, that's when I would think about maybe I should unfollow this person, especially if that happens a couple a couple of times. You know, it could be that sometimes you might run into those situations. You know, somebody's on a on a business trip or somebody's, you know, somebody's had a big event in their life and they're sharing, you know, some personal stuff that might not be super relevant to, to what you want to learn from them, um, you know, and maybe you want to give them a pass on that. But if that keeps happening over and over again um, and it's stuff that you're not interested in or it's not relevant to you, then you might want to think about uh, unfollowing somebody. I, I'm still catching up on the chat, so uh, I apologize, guys, if, if you guys are ahead of me. I saw Barb had a question about uh, places to uh, to find hashtag lists, and I know that hashtags.org or is it hashtag.org was mentioned in some of our materials that we shared uh, for the pre-course activities. But does anybody else have uh, other suggestions about places to sort of find what hashtags are being used? I think Twubs is a great place. I also think. Yeah, we listed a couple of resources. Um, the, those two, I believe we listed two uh, URLs that actually um, are lists of chats that currently take place on a regular basis. And a lot of times that's a great place to hone in and figure out what kind of topics am I interested in and would I be interested in joining these chats. Because what happens within a chat is not only do you use that specific hashtag related to that content, but then people that are using that information for other purposes will add in their own hashtags. A lot of times in, um, in the Cooperative Extension, we use CES value, right, as, as one of the hashtags that we tack on to whatever we're doing so that people can see that this is all part of the Cooperative Extension service. So I think just kind of taking a look at what's out there, looking at those uh, chat lists, looking at, of course, hashtag.org, and you can pretty much search. If you just do a Google search, you will find lists of hashtags. So it's pretty easy to kind of um, pull that information up. I do want to back up and, and mention one other thing about the conversation that we were just having about honing in on your network and, and putting together your stream in such a way that it is specific to your interests. Um, I work with a ton of different people across the Cooperative Extension Service, and I follow and work with, on Twitter, a ton of people with multiple interests. I, because I'm working with them and teaching them how to use Twitter, I follow them, and I typically follow them on my mobile device so that I can make sure to help them learn how to use the product. Well, one of the things that that, that does to my stream is it, it muddles it up with lots of content and lots of um, information that I'm not necessarily interested in. Some of you are also going to run into that as you start working with people in communities. You want to maintain that connection, but maybe they're not necessarily doing something that aligns perfectly with your research interests or something that you want to do, but you still want to maintain that connectivity with them because of whatever that particular program is that you worked with them on. And I think, again, that's where lists and other ways to, you know, hashtags and other ways to kind of curate and hone in on the information you are interested in becomes extremely important. So I just wanted to reiterate that, you know, you don't necessarily have to have your stream set up in such a way, excuse me, in such a way that it's specific to your research interest. That's where lists and hashtags come in. And I understand people that that do it like what Bob is doing. He only wants, you know, a certain amount of people in his stream so that he's getting relevant information in that stream. But I, I guess I use Twitter a little bit differently in that I, 
utilize what I need from that stream and then move on and do what I want to do with it. I wouldn't want to be in a situation where I've met somebody at a at a training or or at a conference and we've touched base on Twitter and we've you know we've had conversations at that event and then all of a sudden I'm no longer following them and they're like wait a minute where'd she go <laughs> so it really depends on what you're doing and how you're going to use the tool so just keep that in mind as you build your your personal learning network. So I see uh, I see your question Barb in the chat about uh, you know. Uh, hashtag specific to that community. I mean, one thing I would say is that being connected to that community uh, will help you keep track of that. Um, and, and Steve's posting some of the hashtags that we've used in, uh, in cooperative extension as well. But if, if you can be connected to people within that community, um, that, will, that will help you kind of stay apprised of what hashtags are, are being shared out there. Um, you know, it's usually, you know, like in the case of the National E-Extension Conference, obviously there's a conference planning committee and we talk, yeah, I'm on that committee, so we talked about, hey, should we, uh, what should we use for a hashtag and we kind of share that with everyone so there might be sort of some agreement amongst the community. Uh, in the case of things like uh, the, the co-op EXT hashtag, uh, I think that one was a little bit more like most Twitter hashtags tend to be to be a little bit more organic where you know, people were just looking for ways to mark things as being cooperative extension, and so uh, that was a good shorthand. You know, and the and the one that you see there, CES value, was much more of a of a marketing one with you know the national organization trying to figure out a way to uh, track tweets uh, about extensions impact. So they can come about lots of different ways, and I, I think the the short answer is to sort of just try and stay connected uh, to that community if you're looking for particular hashtags that are being used. Okay, any other questions about building your learning network or did everybody get a chance to share? Uh, I didn't see a, a ton of shares in the chat. Uh, if you want to share one of the Twitter accounts that you followed this past uh, week and, uh, and share you know, what that account tweets about, maybe that would be a good way to help other people grow uh, their learning network. Uh, Donna's asking about how do I add Twitter to my email signature. Well, the easiest way, you know, it's going to vary depending on your on your email client. Uh, the easiest way is to just put your Twitter URL in your signature is just text. And so, uh, your Twitter URL is twitter.com followed by your username. So, for instance, mine is Twitter. Uh, I'm just going to try and type it in here so you can kind of see how it looks. Uh, twitter.com slash ndbob, if I can hit the slash. You know, so that's, that's if you want to add that, not my, not my account, but, you know, if you want to add that with your username instead of the ndbob, that's a link to your Twitter account. And so that's an easy way to do it. If you want to get fancy, you know, some email programs have ways that you can, uh, like on my email account, I put a little Twitter icon that I got off the net and make that into the link. But, um, Basically, the idea is you're just linking to your Twitter account. So I'm going to let uh, I'm going to let the guides try and keep up with some of these chat questions. Lots of stuff uh, in there. Um, I'm going to sort of move on to a few things here. I don't, if there are specific questions about finding and following, uh, just let me know. Um, in the in the chat, and we'll we'll walk through some of these slides. But I want to take some time to sort of prep for the next week here. And so uh, this coming week in your uh, Twitter cohort activities, we're going to ask you to do some things with retweets. Um, you know, and related to that, we're going to ask you to send a tweet and mention someone in the tweet. That's where you put the the at sign uh, in front of their username. Um, and then we're also going to ask you to retweet something someone in the Twitter cohort tweeted or someone else tweeted. And uh, of course, when, we, when you do all these things, you'll be doing them using the Twitter cohort hashtags. So we can kind of uh, keep track of each other and what each other are doing. But I just wanted to show you a few things about doing that. Uh, Marissa produced a, a really uh, good video 
that's in the syllabus. Uh, we'll ask you to watch that video. It's called Tweets and Retweets and uh, really uh, helpful to kind of get your head around some things. But I just wanted to cover some some step-by-step -step, uh, ways that you can uh, handle some of this stuff. So you know, there's a couple different ways, there's probably several different ways that uh, people reshare things on Twitter. But the, the two major ways um, are, um, you know, to just retweet something. And so you can see here in my Twitter stream uh, in the picture that I have up here, uh, this is a case where I don't follow software carpentry. I don't follow them. I would not have seen their tweet, except I do follow open science. So see where it says retweeted by open science. And so um, open science just click the retweet button either in Twitter or in whatever Twitter client that they had. They didn't edit that tweet at all. Um, they didn't type anything in. They just clicked retweet and it just automatically a reshared. Same thing with the one below that. I don't follow Nicola Osborne. I do follow Graham Steele. I wouldn't have seen that tweet if Graham Steele hadn't clicked that retweet button. So there's there's those kinds of retweets. But you almost you also might see retweets like, and this might be a little bit small, I apologize if it is, but down below, and this is this tends to be mostly how I retweet things, and that's what you know. I call it an old style retweet. That retweet button that, that Twitter um, introduced a while back, it's probably a couple of years ago now. Before that, when you retweeted something, you would just type in RT and then that user's name who originally sent that tweet. Um, and then you could edit and add to that. So that RT uh, is a way of, of retweeting something, especially if you're going to add something to it or edit it, or if you really want to make sure that you call out that user by name um, and that they uh, get alerted uh, to that because instead of uh, in, in the case where it says RT at Timbuk Teeth, uh, instead of at Timbuk Teeth being just notified of the fact that I retweeted one of his tweets, he is going to be notified that he was mentioned in a tweet because you can see his name actually appears in it. Whereas it, on the previous one, uh, the names don't, the SW Carpentry doesn't appear in this tweet. It's just sort of like copying it and sending it uh, to your followers. Um, somebody want to help me out, guys? I, I think I just confused myself, but there might be some, some ways to clarify that a little bit between, you know, new retweets and the old RT style. What do you guys tend to use more, Steve or John or Marissa? Victor. It depends on where I'm at, what program I'm using, and what I'm, how I'm retweeting it. If it's easier to click on the retweet button, I click on that. If it's something I want to just, I've already got it copied and pasted, or if I want to modify it a little, then I'll put an MT in front of it. Great, thanks. So there's a couple different ways to to handle these things. Um, one is, uh, this is within Hootsuite now. Um, so if you see a tweet in Hootsuite um, in your column, uh, looks like we, okay. Um, if you see a, uh, if you see a tweet that you want to reshare in Hootsuite, um, what you'll do is click that little sort of recycling guy looking button on that tweet. You'll have to actually mouse over the, that tweet in order for that button to pop up and then you click retweet. And when you first set up Hootsuite by default, it's, it's set up to do the RT kind of tweet. So when you click that, you'll see your, your compose window opens up here and you get the RT followed by the username of the person that, whose tweet you're, you're retweeting and, um, and then that will fill in the rest, the rest of the tweet. Um, and then if you want to send that, you just click send now and that'll post uh, as RT. Right, you, you, you type the RT in, Eric, and that followed by the user's name who sent that tweet. And if you do this out of Hootsuite by default, when you click that retweet button, that's what's going to fill in this compose box there. So it'll already be in there for you. You won't have to type the RT. Um, let's see here. Um, 
if you want to change that default, the, re the reason I bring that up about Hootsuite is um, that's the default behavior. And so you can't really do that first kind of retweeting where you're just sharing without the RT and all that stuff unless you change your preferences. So what you need to do in Hootsuite to get that set up um, is to go to your settings button. That's the little gear on the left hand side. Getting um, okay. <laughs> some people trying to connect by a teleconference, and I keep getting some notifications there. So, um, so you click your little settings gear on the side here, and then choose preferences. And then what you're looking for is this box that I have uh, outlined here. It says use Twitter web retweets. That'll allow you to use uh, Hootsuite to just send those uh, those new retweets the, without the RT, just to kind of repost it to your followers. And when you do that, you're going to get a little bit different uh, behavior when you uh, mouse over that retweet button. Um, unfortunately, the way I did this screen capture, you can't see the retweet button. But where you see uh, my face and it says retweet to your followers, that pops up when you mouse over the retweet button. And then you've got two different choices. If you just say yes, that's that first style of retweet that we looked at, the one like this, where it would just it would look like it was a tweet from whoever you were retweeting. It would just say retweeted by your name, your your Twitter name. Um, so that's what would happen if you just picked yes at this point. If you want to do an old style, an RT kind of retweet, then you would just click edit here. And that would give you a screen like this where it would pop into this compose box again. And you could uh, you could make changes to this. Uh, those kinds of things. And when you watch um, when you watch Marissa's video, you'll see that some of the kinds of changes that you might want to make. Like in this tweet, I might if it didn't have the Twitter cohort hashtag and I was trying to share it with this community, I might want to add that hashtag. Um, sometimes you will try and do a retweet like this one up here, and you can see uh, if you look um, sort of in the lower uh, left of the compose box there, you see the minus nine in red. That means I'm nine characters over 140. And so I might have to edit this tweet a little bit, shorten some things, maybe remove some extra words in order to get that uh, within 140 characters. So editing that tweet allows you to do those kinds of things. Do you guys have any questions about retweets or uh, guides? Do you have anything to, to add to that? I know we've got some some stuff you've been adding in the chat. So Elizabeth is asking about uh, using the MT. Um, I use MT. MT to me means modified tweet. Um, and so instead of RT, if I make changes to someone's tweet, um, I send it as an MT, just letting people know this is not a direct quote. Um, that may be less important when you're, you know, resharing something that's just, you know, uh, directing someone to a link or something like that. But I definitely think it's important if somebody's saying something, you know. So if if uh, Steve would post something saying. I think Twitter is this, or I think people should always tweet like this, and I edited that, I would definitely use the MT uh, just to make sure that people know I'm not, this isn't a direct quote of Steve. Uh, I've made some changes, uh, even just to kind of shorten it up. And I see that Marissa's uh, point, uh, posting to the chat there about uh, some easy edits that you can uh, do to uh, shorten up a retweet so that it fits within that 140 characters. Other questions about retweets? That'll be something that we'll be asking you to work on this coming week before next Monday's meeting. Okay. The other thing I want to show you real quickly 
uh, is about sharing links. Uh, that's another thing that we'll be asking you to do this week is to, to find some, some web resources, and that can be anything, anything that has a URL, a blog post, a news article, um, a website, whatever, anything that has a URL, and to post those through Hootsuite uh, and do that shortening uh, the URL. And that was a question I think that came up in, in last week's meeting is, uh, or that somebody shared uh, on Twitter, I can't remember which, but um, was how do I share web resources. And so I'm just going to step through some, some quick uh, screenshots here just to kind of show you how to do that. So one of the things I wanted to show you is um, the easiest way for me to share stuff off of the web is uh, by using um, some plugins or add-ons to my browser. And for Hootsuite, there is uh, the Hootsuite Hootlet in Chrome. I use uh, Google Chrome. It's my uh, most often as my browser. They also have an add-on for Firefox called the Hootsuite Link Share. And uh, if you just go to Hootsuite.com and, and search for those things, you'll be able to find them with instructions on how to install them. But this makes sharing like really, really quick. So I've got uh, John Dorner's post to the Twitter cohort blog. If you didn't see it, by the way, you should check it out. Good post on should you have multiple Twitter accounts. Um, I've got that pulled up in my browser just like I was reading it, uh, you know, on the web. And you can see up here in the top, uh, hand corner, that's where my Hootsuite Hootlet is, and then little owl button up there. Once I have that installed, when I click that button, this is what happens. I get a compose window that pops up right on top of that blog post. Notice I'm not in Hootsuite at this point. It just, just pops up right on top of whatever web page I'm looking at, um, and it fills in with the title or headline of that uh, web page. Um, in this case, it also says Twitter cohort because that's the that's coming from our WordPress site, our site title, and then it gives me a shortened link up here uh, to that resource. That's all typed in for me. At this point, I could then you know click in that box and type in my own comments or hashtags or anything else, and then I've got a couple of buttons that I can use in Hootsuite. I can just send it right now, or I can auto schedule it so it will go out. Uh, in the future. So using those, uh, you know, this Hootlet or these, these add-ons or plugins or little bookmarklets, uh, whatever you want to call them, for your browser can really be a quick and easy way to share uh, web content. If you're not using that, there's a couple of different things that you can, can do. And again, we're going to work in Hootsuite since that's the client that we are using for the Twitter cohort. So here's a case where I just copied the full link of John's blog post here. You can see the whole thing, twittercohort.wordpress.com. And then I go into Hootsuite, I click the Compose window, and then I can type in whatever I want and paste that full link uh, right into the tweet. And again, I could send that now or I could, I could schedule it as well. Um, and that's basically uh, all there is to it. And you could add your comments or your hashtags, but that's going to post with the full link, uh, the whole thing unshortened uh, in there. The other way I could do the very similarly is to copy and paste that link, but instead of pasting it into the message here, so that's where the full URL will show up, I can paste it into this add link window at the bottom of the compose window and then shrink it. Um, so that you know shrinks that URL, it makes it in Hootsuite's default case, it's the ow.ly uh, shortened URL. And then you get something like this. So here I, I pasted my link, full link into this add a link uh, window. I click the shrink button and instead of that whole string of Twitter cohort.wordpress.com, et cetera, I get this shortened link up here with the ow.ly uh, link shortener. Any questions about link shortening or sharing links? I got a few more slides I can show you here. 
You can do that in most applications, Alicia. Um, um, and one of the things that I've noticed is I think many of them are starting to modify kind of how this process works. Sometimes you can put the long, horrid URL just in your tweet. And when it comes out on the other end to your followers into their stream, it shows up automatically as a shortened URL. So I think they're trying to eliminate the need to plug it in to this little box. It doesn't always work, but I think this is a new feature that we're going to see. Um, they've, I know that they've, um, they've kind of been sort of testing it. I've been watching across the different applications I use. So um, yeah, you can, you can uh, do any sort of shortened URL in Twitter, Hootsuite, TweetDeck, um, all of them pretty much. Yeah, and a lot of times in those clients, I know um, in Buffer, I'm pretty sure in TweetDeck, if I remember right, you know, there, there can be uh, preferences that you can set in your settings for those tools that, you know, basically say, whenever I post a link in a tweet, shorten it for me so you don't have to go through that, uh, as Marissa is saying, go through the steps of, of shortening it. You can also um, design your own link, so to speak. If you open up a, a Bitly account, or um, I know there are others as well. I typically use Bitly. Um, so if I want a link to look a certain way, a shortened URL to look a certain way, um, I can go in there, put the horrid long URL in, and then it creates a yeah, it creates a shortened URL for me, and then behind the HTTP slash bit dot ly, I can say, I can call it whatever I want. So maybe it's ask help lit, or maybe it's CES value, or maybe it's something else. But I can make it a shortened URL, which makes it really super easy for my followers to, to pick that up and, and do something with it. So a couple things that it, I, we mentioned that we want you to mention a user uh, in your tweets and if you haven't done that before, you know, it's pretty easy to do. So this is a screenshot from Hootsuite where I have that, that, uh, that blog post shared in here and then I'm just clicking in uh, the, the compose window and adding my own thoughts. So I've got good posts from and I'm going to mention John. So instead of just typing John Dorner, um, which, you know, there's a few th reasons I might not want to do that. One is it's not clickable then, so it, if it, that John Dorner won't become clickable so people can find his Twitter account. John won't be notified that he's been mentioned if I just type John Dorner. So if I'm trying to give him some love, let him know that I shared his blog post, um, I want to put his, his Twitter account, his username in. And so in Hootsuite, as you start typing, you put that at sign and as I just, you can see I just have the J type there. It's popping up uh, Twitter accounts that I follow that I might be mentioning. And so uh, you can see over here in the gray box uh, towards the left there, J Dorner pops up. That's John's Twitter account. I could just click that and that will fill in the whole thing. So I don't have to type at J Dorner exactly how it, how it is. Um, as I type it, It'll give me some suggestions and uh, and let me know, uh, and then I can select those so I can get those in there. So that's how you can uh, mention somebody uh, in a tweet. That's one of the things that we that we ask you to do this coming week. And so when I do that, you can see here, and this is just in Twitter.com how that appears. Um, you can see John's name is or John's Twitter name is a link. And that would be clickable for somebody who received my tweet. You know, if they don't follow John, they could click it. They'll get that Twitter profile pop up that we saw earlier, and they could choose, you know, to follow John, uh, those kinds of things. So that's we call that a mention when you when you use someone's username inside of a tweet with that at sign. Uh, do you guys have questions about that? Okay. We'll go ahead and post to the chat pod if you have questions. There were a couple things um, that were asked uh, that I don't think got answered. One was in, Hoots, um, in Hootsuite, you can also follow keywords and phrases. Victor said that. And then Lynn asked, uh, how do we do that? Or, oh, no, I'm sorry. I think Somebody I asked, how do we? 
I think I actually have a slide here. Let me see. Follow keywords and phrases. OK, so here's a very uh, small uh, screenshot of Hootsuite. And do you see that the little magnifying glass? I've got it highlighted there. That's the quick search. Um, and we shared this uh, last week, too, I think. But when you click that quick search, um, you can see, you can use that to search Twitter. Um, so in this case, I'm just uh, searching for that uh, cooperative extension hashtag, C-O-O-P-E-X-T. Um, so let's say I wanted to follow that or add that to my, my streams in Hootsuite. A couple of things about this. Um, once, I, once I click Enter and it shows me the search, you'll see anything that has that, any tweets that have that hashtag uh, show up here, so you can see the one from BHFJR1 and NCCE underscore news. Um, those show up because they've got the hashtag. Um, up at the top, where you see that search Twitter, find Twitter users, um, I got that to pop up just by clicking that little down arrow next to the Twitter icon right up in the search box. Because if you're looking for Twitter users, not just searching for tweets, you'd want to click Find Twitter Users. But since the question in this case is how do I you know, follow a hashtag or follow a keyword, I, could, I did it with a hashtag here. You could just as easily type a keyword in there, and it would give you tweets, uh, that, uh, tweets that have that keyword in them. And then all you have to do then is click Save as Stream down here, and that will add that search as a column. Um, so I don't know if you can see, if you kind of look in the background there, you'll see I've got a column set up for the netlet hashtag and a column set up for the next CONF hashtag, the National E-Extension Conference. Um, those, like I said, they could have the hashtag in front of them or they could just be network literacy or, or something like that as just a, uh, a search term that you can add as a column and any time they'll show up in tweets that will get added to that column in Hootsuite. Okay, so could I verbally verbally describe? I don't. Let me know if I missed other questions here. I'm seeing one from uh, Carrie. Maybe this one from Lynn. She asked if we start a new hashtag topic. How do we invite others? She'd like to start a chat for master gardeners across the continent. And Marissa said, "Use twubs." Do you want to elaborate on that? Um, maybe Marissa should elaborate on that. Do you want to yeah. jump in there, Marissa? Yeah, sure. Okay, so um, I started using TWUB several years ago because I do a lot of um, technology for conferences, and TWUB's put together this really cool conference suite, and if you registered your hashtag, you got free access to this conference suite, which enabled people to um, follow that hashtag, become part of, the, of the, the tribe that followed that hashtag, but in addition to that, it gave you um, a user-friendly way to follow along with a conversation that was happening around a specific hashtag. So for instance, at an event like a conference or at some sort of um, you know, program or workshop or whatever, uh, it gives people a really quick and easy way to follow that hashtag and carry on the conversation because TWUBS automatically plugs the hashtag in for you. Um, one of the reasons that I actually suggest that people do register that their hashtags there is because it also gives you a unique URL to that hashtag that you can share among those you're interested in pulling into that conversation. So it makes it really easy. TWUBS is super user friendly. You sign in using your, um, your Twitter ID and you register your hashtag and you begin tweeting. It's super simple. Uh, there's lots of tools that keep coming up with new stuff all the time, so go take a few minutes and check it out. And um, especially if you're trying to build a hashtag, that's a great place to start. I was looking for a really good definition for curate, um, you know, as it pertains to social media. And um, I'm still looking. Bob, if you have one, feel free to share it. I mean, basically, it's talking about pulling content together and preserving that content around a specific topic area. So maybe you're using a hashtag, or you know, maybe you're using um, some keywords that you're curating information around, or whatever. Um, it's basically pulling content together. 
Yeah, and I would add one element to that when we talk about curation, and that is uh, adding context to it. So it's n it, it's not necessarily, um, you know, and the ana easy analogy is a museum curator. Um, it's not just randomly saying, well, I think this is good art, and this is good art, and this, this is a pretty picture, so I'm going to pull all those together. But to pull those together around some kind of central idea or providing some kind of broader meaning, meaning by putting those things together. And so when you're talking about curating content uh, on the web, um, you know, the, the ideal is that you're thinking the same way. You're not just pulling things together because they happen to share a key word, but you're trying to find uh, the right things to share and collect in a place that's going to provide broader uh, meaning, meaning of some some way. Um, in curation tools like Scoop It, there's you know, and in Twitter as well, there's the opportunity opportunity for you to add at least in Twitter a very little bit of context to that as well. Um, and I'm not always the best example of that when you're following me on Twitter. I try to be and try to think about that, but um, you know, uh, there's a there's sort of a difference between just resharing something as opposed to resharing it maybe with that little bit of context of this is why this is important or this is why it might be meaningful to you. Um, so when we talk about curating, yes, it is that collecting, um, but you're operating as a filter for people, so you're not just collecting everything. That's that's called aggregation. Like there's. Uh, algorithms that'll go out there and search the internet for anything that has this keyword and then put it into an aggregator. Um, we're not aggregating, we're filtering out the best of the stuff um, and then collecting it around a particular idea or topic and then ideally adding context to it. So that's that's what I think of when I talk about curation. All right, we've got about five minutes left. I want to pull up a couple of slides uh, to talk about this coming week's activity. Hopefully, you're getting your uh, questions answered in the chat as I talk. Um, so here's the list of things for you to do this week. Um, watch Marissa's video about tweets and retweets. That'll really uh, help drive home some of the stuff that we've talked about, about retweeting on Twitter. Um, find at least three valuable web resources, shorten those URLs and post them uh, on Twitter. Uh, using the Twitter cohort hashtag, I should have put that in there. And, um, uh, whenever I say tweet something, uh, at least during the, the uh, duration of this uh, learning experience, I hope that uh, you'll use that Twitter cohort hashtag. Uh, send one tweet about something you've learned so far using the Twitter cohort hashtag. That would be great. To, and. Um, uh, we'll collect those as well. Some of you might have saw the tweet that we're curating the Twitter cohort experience on Storify. I'll try and send that tweet again if you didn't see it so that you can find the link to that resource. Um, and send a tweet uh, with a mention in it. Mention someone. Uh, it, I say someone in the Twitter cohort. It doesn't have to be someone in the Twitter cohort. But uh, send uh, a tweet with a mention in it. A couple other things, uh, use, you know, play around with the retweeting, use the RT retweeting, use just the regular new retweeting, uh, just kind of the reposting one. Um, make sure that you keep an eye on the, on the tweets uh, in Hootsuite and other places uh, and participate, you know, when people ask questions or uh, any conversations get going, uh, include the Twitter cohort hashtag in your responses. And then next uh, week when we meet, we'll, we'll ask you to share uh, some of those web resources that you, that you tweeted about. And so I hope that you'll be uh, prepared to do that. Uh, keep the questions coming. You can uh, continue to post them in the chat pod. I can uh, definitely stay in the room uh, for a while longer. And some of the moderators might be able to join me as well and keep asking, keep answering your questions. Remember, there's a catch-up session uh, tonight. It's 9 p.m. Eastern. We'll talk about some of the same things we talked about today. If you want to hear those again um, and answer questions uh, tonight, uh, post questions on Twitter if you have them during the week. Uh, just use the Twitter cohort hashtag. Uh, you can contact the guides uh, for more help. That would be a good way to, if you have a question and you want a guide to answer it, um, it'd be a good way to get your mention in a tweet by uh, including one of those usernames that you see on the screen 
uh, in that tweet uh, and that will help draw attention to the guide uh, for your question. So keep your, uh, keep your questions coming. Uh, have a great week tweeting. Again, we'll be in the room for a while to continue to answer your questions, but I'm going to stop the recording now and uh, wish you a, a great week on Twitter. Thanks for joining us.